you. So we'll go to the next talk now um, from Christophe Massio about multicast using the UPI framework. So you have been here many times, I think, but here you have a real practical application of UPI. So please, Christophe. Thank you, Matthias. Um, yes, yeah, so the talk will be about a new protocol that's called Automatic Multicast Tunneling, or AMT for short, and the proof of concept that we've done with a web browser and UPipe to display multicast uh, content inside the web browser. Uh, so I start with a little introduction about multicast. Uh, so why do you want to do multicast? Because it saves network bandwidth by avoiding packet duplication. And of course, it is particularly useful for television, but not only. Uh, how does it work? Um, well, in a unicast environment, um, for each client, the server has to output uh, the data once. So there is duplication here three times, here two times uh, of, the, of the data in the, in the backbone. I in multicast, well, the client wants to receive the data, uh, ask the, the local router uh, to send him the data. If the uh, router doesn't have the data, it asks to the upstream router and so on. And if the router already has the, uh, the data, it just duplicates in the correct way, but it doesn't duplicate all the way to the server. So it's much more bandwidth efficient. Uh, and for big streams like uh, IPTV, it's of course very useful. So the first uh, specification about multicast was called ANUSUS multicast, it's an R RFC. Uh, so basically multicast stream is defined by uh, an address. Um, so to subscribe to a multicast stream, you just give the address. And there are several subscription protocols that are very complex uh, that uh, allow the multicast stream to be sent to from the server to the client. Uh, so this uh, also requires a central authority to assign multicast addresses because there are a limited number of it. Uh, and this is currently mostly used, or probably only used in closed IPTV networks. Um, there is a second specification a few years later that's called source-specific multicast. So in this specification, the multicast address, a multicast stream is defined by the, its address, multicast address, and the source that sends it. So two addresses. Uh, so that makes the um, subscription protocol much simpler because if you want to, when you want to subscribe to a stream, you just go upstream towards the source. Uh, maybe it will stop uh, somewhere because a router already has the stream. But the, the scheme of subscribing is, is much easier. Um, so it's also very common in IPTV network, in closed IPTV networks. Uh, as you can understand, it's also been built for the internet. But have you ever already seen a multicast stream on the internet? Probably not. Um, so why? Um, so first reason, because there was no incremental adoption strategy. That is, either you're on a multicast network and you get the stream, or you're not in a multicast network and you get nothing, nothing. Uh, so it's one or zero. And since today uh, it's mostly zero, no one has an incentive to do multicast. Uh, also the industry, people in the industry like Cisco, Juniper, uh, Alcatel and so on, uh, well, they concentrate in delivering IP multicast in networks that could support it already. So they're, they're not interested in the big internet so far. So far because a uh, few players have gathered to to create a new RFC, so currently it's only a draft uh, that's called Automatic Multicast Tunneling, AMT. And it's a protocol between a gateway, a gateway that would be on the client side, close to the client or in the client, and a relay that would be server side, close to the server or in the server, or close. Uh, and so this protocol allows multicast distribution to extend even on unicast only uh, connected receivers. Uh, and in other areas, well, you, if you are already on the multicast network, you don't need AMT. So you have the benefits of multicast. And for the applications, you don't have to change a thing. It works seamlessly as well. So I detail a bit how it works uh, with this slide. So if uh, the streamer is on the right, content owner. So if you are in a multicast network, like the one on the bottom, uh, you have the purple uh, video streams that are flowing in just one uh, copy uh, down to the clients that are down there. So everything is perfect. Now, suppose you're in a unicast only network, like the one in the left. Well, the clients here, 
well, they want to subscribe to a multicast address, but nothing comes because the network doesn't have the notion of multicast. So what do they do? They uh, ask to talk to the nearest relay. So they discover the uh, nearest AMT relay with an Anycast address. So the Anycast address will point to this relay here, pointed to by the black, big black arrow here. And this relay here will send a copy of the stream to each of the Unicast clients. So instead of sending from the server to the client, it's only from the nearest um, relay, available relay, uh, from, the, from the client. So it has another interesting side effect uh, in that, well, the ISP here, well, probably we want to switch to multicast as soon as possible, or partly to multicast, because that would make his backbone, uh, well, more efficient uh, than it um, used before. So the, um, the way it works AMT is that first the client does a standard multicast join, IGMP. It waits for some kind of a timeout. Uh, IGMP doesn't, is not a two-way protocol, so you don't have an answer. But you must wait for a timeout like two or three seconds or five seconds, something like that. If you don't get any stream, then you switch to AMT protocol. So AMT, any cast address, you get the address of the nearest relay. You say, I want to subscribe to this group and this source and the uh, AMT relay will set up um, a point-to-point -point unicast tunnel with uh, the um, wanted data. And when you want to unsubscribe, well, same way, you ask your relay to unsubscribe you. So AMT looks great. There are also a few things that it doesn't fix. Um, so AMT is, an UD is a UDP protocol only, just, just like most of the multicast streams as well. Uh, so if you have packet loss on your network, well, you have packet loss at the end. So um, MT doesn't fix that. Also, if you have latency, uh, jitter, uh, packet reordering, well, you have to deal with that at the application uh, le level uh, with protocols such as RTP, for instance. Uh, also, if you have network congestion, uh, um, you will not be able to do adaptive bitrate streaming like you do currently. Um, you have to implement that at the application layer as well. Uh, switch to a different multicast stream that would be lower bitrate, for instance. Um, that kind of thing, but this is application. Um, so now I turn to the proof of concept that we've tried to do to demonstrate the technology. Um, so it's a proof of concept that we've done with the EBU that uh, we're hosting uh, the servers that we use. Uh, also Cisco has provided uh, a router and OpenIDN, my company, has also provided a, a streamer and some code. Uh, and so the proof of concept was to be able to display a multicast stream uh, in a web browser using AMT, switching to AMT if needed, without having the AMT support in the OS or in the network, because that would be cheating. Um, so the first question mm, that you ask probably is how you display such kind of video in a web browser. Uh, well, nowadays you have things, uh, great things like HTML5, uh, um, Flash and so on, but it doesn't deal with UDP. It's, uh, it's, uh, it deals with files, it deals with HLS, chunk delivery, and so on. Uh, so if you want to do a non-standard protocol, how would you do? Well, 10 years ago, you would have done ten NPAPI. So NPAPI was the way to do Mozilla plugin in a web browser, not only for Mozilla browsers, by the way. Uh, lots of browsers supported it. Uh, it's now deprecated and even disabled on some browsers nowadays because it's not secure. Um, from the same uh, era, you also have ActiveX, but that would be Windows only and Internet Explorer only with the same qualities and, and faults. Um, promi uh, promising technology, Mediasus extensions, MSC. I've looked into it, but it looks very tied to chunk delivery. Uh, so um, chunk delivery like HLS or Dash. Uh, and it doesn't, f I don't think I could have done something with it, uh, with um, packet-based delivery like we have. So we've turned to uh, a technology called PPAPI, a native client. So that's a technology by Google. Um, and it allows you to run native code, so native C code, uh, inside a web browser, actually inside a sandbox. Um, so that protects uh, the environment of, of the user from well, malware and so on. So that's an interesting technology. So for the web browser, we have PPAPI. The other components we've uh, used is, uh, well, Cisco's open source AMT libraries. So I think it's BSD. 
uh, you can download it on GitHub. Uh, the slides are available on FOSDEM side, of FOSDEM uh, website, if you want. Um, so the empty libraries uh, is um, is written this way. Uh, it's it mimics the uh, standard uh, socket, BSD socket API. So you have a call to open a socket, you have a call to join a multicast group, and you have a call to read uh, from the multicast uh, stream you want to read. And the library will either do um, some, some SSM, standard uh, multicast, or AMT uh, after a timeout. So, so the library does, does the work for you. So all you have to do is use the library instead of uh, joining the groups yourself. Um, and we also needed a multimedia framework to bind all of these together. Uh, so uh, my pet project is Upipe. Uh, Kiran talked about it earlier today. Um, so Upipe is a multimedia framework that is low level, lower level than VLC and GStreamer. Uh, and it allows you to connect pipes uh, next to each other. So here you have one pipe that is the AMT source um, that does the uh, job of getting the packet, a TSD mux, uh, decoders uh, and uh, well, uh, scaler and resamplers are from SSMPEG. And we'll, we already have a um, well display module for native client in your pipe, so that was used as well. Um, so the current POC works. I'll show a demo later. There are also a few limits that can be quite annoying. Um, the first limit is that sockets are blocked by default uh, uh, in native clients. So that's a bit of a pity. You, you cannot open the socket at all. Um, there is a Chrome, fla a Chrome flag to uh, enable some kind of socket support, but not enough for our case. Uh, for our case to work, you have to specify a command line switch to Chrome. So that's not very practical. Another problem is that the uh, socket API in Chrome, th th that's all because of the sandbox. The sandbox abstracts a lot of calls, and also it doesn't have support for IGMP at the moment. There is a ticket opened in Chrome's uh, ticketing uh, um, website, but mm, there is currently no IGMP support. So actually, AMT is the only thing that works in the plugin. So it's interesting to see how AM AMT can be a workaround for that kind of situation, actually. Uh, another caveat is that uh, while there is no assembly optimization, no MMX, no ICC, and so on in FSMPEG, so that makes the decoding very slow. So it works with SD video, or with HD, you'd better have a very big machine, and probably it won't work. Um, native client does support some kind of assembly, uh, well, MMX and SSC, but not in the way FSMPEG uses it. Uh, so um, there is probably some kind of rewriting uh, of code to make it work. But there is a, a better option actually, is that PPAPI now fe for, for a few months uh, has featured a video decoder interface. I have not been able to have it work, so I guess it's still under development. But I think that's the way to go in the future if we want to go further that way. But probably in the very long end, um, AMT should probably be integrated into something native into the web browser like MSC or some other uh, W3C specification. So I switched to the demonstration. So to, um, to explain what, we wh what I'll be running here. Um, so we have at the EBU in Switzerland, uh, we have a, um, a, a, a streamer that sends a multicast stream to a multicast enabled network, that's the internal uh, multicast network of the EBU. And there is a Cisco uh, relay uh, that acts as an AMT relay. Uh, and here I have my PC that will talk to the relay, ask for the multicast address that's outside, that's coming outside of this server, and display it. So it worked one hour ago, <laughs> so probably <laughs> it won't work today. So this, um, this is nothing for the moment. This is something. Um, yep. So this is uh, a page that is actually running from the upipe.org website. So you can go to upipe.org and, uh, and it's public. Uh, if 20 people, of course, go to the same page at once, um, probably your bandwidth won't be happy with that. I think it's rate limited uh, to uh, like three or four clients, Thomas told me. <laughs> and so if I click AMT, here I see the video appearing. So that's streaming live from the EBU. I'm actually amazed it works so well because I'm only connected uh, with Wi-Fi. So that means we have no packet loss from the EBU to here, including the Wi-Fi, because we would see them. Uh, there is, uh, 
You do, yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there, I've, there is no, except that, uh, there is RTP, that's all, for packet redrawing, but uh, there is nothing else for the, to, to recover from packet losses. So. So. Is there a specific version of Chrome that you have to use? Mm, uh, PPAPI has been available for quite a long time now. We started working with it uh, from version 35. Uh, I think now we are at 39 or 38. Uh, so this is the latest version, but it should work with earlier versions as well. Uh, now the only sp specific thing you have to do is uh, you have to uh, uh, open m uh, minus m dash dash allow initial socket API upipe equals upipe dot org to allow this website to use the uh, initial socket API. It's not a technical limitation, of course, because the uh, Chrome does know how to open a socket. It's more political limitation. So maybe if we talk to um, uh, Google people, or Chromium people, uh, that could be arranged. So um, to finish up, I, I'm almost done actually. Uh, um, so to finish up, um, there is also an EBU effort on uh, Multicast. So that's the uh, URL of the um, ebu.ch uh, website. Uh, for multicast, uh, uh, there is a configuration for uh, for Cisco uh, equipments. Um, I should put some text about the demo as well that I've still not written, but at some point there will be. Uh, I think you need to open an account, but I think it's free, yeah. if I'm correct. So you need an account on tech.ebu.ch, but then you can already access the wiki, basically. Yes, it's a wiki, uh, so you can uh, you can modify it as well. Uh, so that was the end of the talk. Um, if you want to, well, we still have some time for questions. If there are uh, questions that are left unanswered, you have my email here. And there was also um, a meetup uh, from the UPipe team tomorrow, Sunday at two o'clock. So at the both room, I think there is only one both room this year. So uh, well, uh, upstairs. Anyway, you know where it is. Okay. Thank you. Very Questions? Yeah, oh, lots of questions. So, yep, please. Uh, what are the perspectives uh, uh, of uh, what is planned uh, to go further without the need for uh, um, the, the PPA, RTC API plugin and uh, uh, native code and so on? What are the next steps for adoption? Well, uh, what are the next steps for adoption of the uh, AMT? So pr probably, well, th this is just a proof of concept that we've done. Uh, it probably wouldn't be the way to go uh, in production. Uh, I think um, if people wanted to, well, th that's of course very interesting for broadcasters because uh, that would save them a lot of money in c on CDNs and, uh, and so on. Uh, so broadcasters would be the primary uh, client of this technology. Um, and most of the time, broadcasters have an application that allows to applications on, you know, our iPhone or Android applications and so on, or on the TV, connected TV. So probably uh, they will need to merge this code to the libAMT directly inside their application. Uh, so that would probably be the next step for them. Uh, if we want to do it as well in the browser, the best would be uh, to merge it into well some kind of MSC. Uh, Is there any work going? Not that I know of. The AMT is still not speci uh, specified today. It's still a draft. So that means the specification may still change. It's, uh, well, it's version 18, so it's an advanced draft. But uh, I think it will become official um, very, uh, very soon. I think the expiration of the draft is June. So, uh, but it's still a draft. So for the moment, it, it's quite new. It's something that we done last year only. So. Uh, so I remember that a few years ago there was uh, a free implementation of the relay. Is it still maintained? I have a Juniper network and actual uh, uh, multicast transit. So I would like to uh, run a relay, but I need uh, uh, some code uh, that uh, and not uh, a Cisco implementation. So the question is uh, if there is a free implementation of the relay. There was one. Is it still implemented? There was one. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen this code. Uh, libAMT, from what I've seen, is only the implementation for the client. 
Uh, do you know who wrote the, implementation, the free implementation for the relay? Uh, I can't remember. It was somebody from ISC, I believe. Okay, so somebody from, I, from ISC. I, I don't know this, so sorry. Uh, I know Cisco and Juniper have implemented it into the product, uh, some versions of the product, sorry. Uh, probably with experimental uh, firmwares as well, but um, about, um, well, an open source relay, I don't know. The protocol is actually quite simple, so it wouldn't be difficult, I think, to write. Okay. Uh, other questions? There were other questions here just behind. Uh, in practical terms, uh, is there a way to some kind of delay or time difference between two end using endpoints I mean is there a cache in the router that needs to enable such a thing and what's the practical time difference between two endpoints so the question is is there a way to uh, add a delay um, between the so OS so basically if, it's, if everyone needs to see the same stream mm. exactly at ah. the same moment so okay so, so it's about synchronizing uh, several uh, clients so that they show the same um, picture exactly at the same moment. So that's your question. Yeah, I mean, um, how live does it need to be, or can you support some kind of not real-time live? Uh, like a delayed real-time sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, delayed. Or VOD. Oh, uh, uh, if, we, if it would be able to support VOD. Well, multicast is um, designed to, 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 to send live data. However, there are people who are doing video on demand also as well on broadcast technology, uh, even on the uh, DTT uh, and so on. So basically that works with push, uh, pushing the, uh, the content earlier. So for instance, if you know that one of, the, um, uh, of, of your content will be viewed a lot, you can push it uh, a few hours earlier or during the night when there is uh, not so much bandwidth used um, in the DTT or the satellite or, uh, or your IP. Uh, network and uh, and so uh, the c client can cache this data and read from the hard drive when you read it so that's uh, st it's something that, uh, standard practice already in the broadcast industry in the DTT satellite world so the same kind of behavior could be implemented with uh, IP and multicast of course so that would require the client to always subscribe to a multicast address that would um, uh, contain um, you know, a carousel of, of files that would be often uh, watched. Um, you could uh, maybe do it as well for some kind of um, replay TV or so on, but that would require um, your customers to, uh, to have pretty much, to, to view the, the show pretty much at the same time. Um, th that's not impossible, but that's application defined, I think. Uh, that's higher level. Okay, uh, yeah, I think there was a, yeah, uh, who was first? Uh, don't remember. Yeah, so here you go. Um, just one question regarding the, the w I mean, for most of the systems now we use Wi Fi now, and nowadays we have, let's say, 90 or 99% of <coughs> people receiving data mm. from Wi Fi. Multicast, native multicast streams are not uh, very suitable for default Wi Fi because they are sent at a fixed bit rate, mm. which doesn't steal more or less the rest of the traffic. How, how do you plan to deal with this? Well, short answer is that we don't. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had a slide uh, saying very clearly that what we don't <laughs> deal with. Oh, uh, that's kind of the things we don't plan to deal with. It's probably an upper layer of protocol. Uh, so Wi-Fi router, it has to be the multicast, multicast conversion itself anyway? Mm, yes, probably. It's unicast UDP, so you will have to uh, uh, you, ha you would have to have a module in the in the NAT uh, in the NAT as well, because um, the pr from what I remember, the protocol first works by sending a packet to a um, the relay, and then the relay gives you the address of the of the machine you have to talk to uh, to get the stream. So there is another circuit to open. Uh, would it? Since you since you're the one initiating the connection, probably it would work. If your your address is going inside the NAT, you are the 
Why is it different? Yeah, but. Uh, most nuts I've seen, uh, when you send a UDP packet to a destination and the destination replies, it works. <laughs> yeah, it's usually accepted. It's, uh, yeah, it's usually it works. Initiating. Yeah. And we are initiating in this case. So it should work, I think. Yeah. Good answer. The NS will not work. Okay, so the question at the back first. So the question is whether the uh, ISPs are active uh, in this domain and are, well, proactive, I would say, uh, in this domain. Um, we've seen uh, some uh, ISPs, some network operators, I think, at the uh, workshops that we've done at DBU already. So some of them are. Um, the protocol is, of course, a preliminary version. Uh, to run it on the Cisco router, you have a um, beta firmware. In there, so of course it's not production ready, um, but for the incentive is that uh, if you're able to spare a few gigabits of data on your backbone, maybe it's worth doing it. But probably the main incentive will come from the content provider, because that's the people who are paying money to send streams. Yes, um, so is there um, a mechanism to discover the closest relay? That was a question. Uh, it's an ANYCAST address. <coughs> so I'm, I'm not the, the biggest network uh, specialist, but I think uh, ANYCAST uh, basically will point, to the, the address that you, you're given will point, will result in some way to the nearest um, uh, relay. Is that, that's the, uh, the principle of ANYCAST, uh, A-N-Y, ANYCAST. Uh, do you want to explain more how it works? <laughs> uh, no. no. <laughs> Nico? <Okay>. No? <laughs> C'est bon? Maybe we can just catch up there. So yeah. yeah, we'll conclude here because we have to go to the next talk. So thank you very much, Christophe. Welcome.